Okay, this is Mike Grady, and I'm going to talk about part two of our drill series. So part one covered uh, the warm-up and activation part using the plyo balls up until the roll-in throw. And so now we're going to talk about the rocker, a really common drill uh, that is uh, used by uh, really uh, the majority of pitchers that, that uh, we've worked with. And also I'm going to show you some uh, hybrid rocker drills and some things that you could do to mix it up. So so why why the rocker? Well, the rocker is a really great drill to work on timing, uh, to feel the, the weight load into the hip, uh, the back hip, uh, to feel the rotational piece, and then finally to feel the lead leg blocking component um, at release point. So a uh, really great drill for a lot of reasons. And so here in this video, you're going to see Kyle doing a good job uh, with the rocker. You can see loading back on that back leg and then uh, driving through and you see that front knee kind of kick back uh, as he blocks over that. So uh, the weights of the balls that you can use here can be seven ounce, five ounce, or three and a half ounce. So this can vary uh, a little bit just for feel. And uh, the one thing that if you are building your own plyo wall at home, mark it with tape about head high so you can focus on hitting a target. It's important to throw that ball to the target uh, every single time. So uh, this is a basic rocker drill. And so uh, here's a hybrid drill. Now Kyle kind of did, did a, has done a couple things here that are unique, kind of comes into the set position, loads up, hits on that front leg, and then rocks back. So uh, this is something that he likes to do, and we like to have our athletes feel like they can have the freedom to do the drills and the movements that they like. Uh, another version of the rocker to start in the rocker position, then lift that front leg up almost into the balance position and then throw from there. So uh, that actually does a little bit better job mimicking what a pitcher would do down the mound. So those are a couple of um, alternate drills that you could do with that. Uh, another topic that you can focus on, especially our high school athletes, is to try to feel some hip to shoulder separation and just to understand what that is. So uh, here's a video here of an athlete doing a uh, walking windup. And what you can see is his belt buckle, if he was wearing one, will open up toward the target first while his shoulders stay closed. And so what you want is you want to feel the opening of the hips right before the shoulders. So you can see it really gets into that back hip and leads with that front hip. And at foot strike, we're going to see the positioning. So you can see the hips have opened up and the shoulders are in line and closed. So this is a really strong position and uh, something that we focus our, with our athletes trying to get that feel. And so then you can just kind of unwind into the throw into release. So hip to shoulder separation is a kind of a mechanical topic that you can focus on and try to feel while you're working on all of these drills. Um, the last drill in the series before going into regular pitching out of the stretch or wind up is the walking wind up. So this drill has the least constraint to it. And so uh, the analogy I like to use is pretend like you're lining up to kick a field goal uh, where the field goal uh, kicker lines up and then to the side and then uh, take about two steps, walk into that wind up and throw. So you can see Kyle kind of do that and then load up and go. Um, so this builds that athleticism and that fluid movement that you want into the delivery. Uh, and then from here, you can either go into pitching if that's what you want to do or even a long toss. So all of these plyo drills, if you're going to be using, if you're going to be throwing from the mound or long tossing that day, <clears throat> or you're doing your high intent work, doing those things, then you can use the plyo work to be 60, 70, 80 uh, percent as, as an activator to get your body ready to do all of that. So uh, a lot of people misunderstand plyo balls and um, think that because the ball is a little bit heavier in weight, it puts a bunch of stress uh, on the arm, that's really not true. The main reason why you, we use plyo balls is to help build arm path and uh, kind of help the athlete feel what's happening with his arm. So a lot of the work we do is warm up, recovery, and sub max effort because you can see all of these drills build on one another and add the next step in the sequence. So athletes can complete all of this without a coach standing there giving verbal cues. So it lets them feel athletic, it lets them piece their delivery together, uh, and then it ends up where you can take your plyo warm up and go right into long toss or right down the mound. So these are some of the drills that we like. And all you need, again, you could have a baseball and a net and do all of these drills 
Um, but the more we can we can do this right now, the better, uh, whether it's every other day, depending on intent. And again, as Alan Jager says, you know, listen to your arm. If you wake up a little bit sore, you know, take that day off, uh, do something different. Uh, but the most important thing is, is to stay in shape and uh, hopefully we can all get back out on the field soon.